Hello, warm well, welcome to today's talk, and I'm going to tell you what this is about so you can decide if you want to watch. It's Wednesday, the 26th of July. Now, if regulators around the world don't take notice of the information I'm about to give via this paper, then they are at best, in my view, negligent. At worst, I don't even want to think about it. After Moderna booster vaccines in a trial done in Switzerland, there were 777 uh, working people followed up with 777 controls. 5.1% of those who had the booster vaccine had increased troponins, indicating cardiomyocyte damage. So 5.1% increased cardiac marker damage, chemicals in the blood. 2.8% of the 777, that is 1 in 35, 1 in 35, had vaccine-associated myocardial injury. Quite astounding and uh, incredible. That's what this is about. If you want to watch, stick around. I think I can get through it all in about sort of but the main points in about 10 minutes if you want to stay. Um, just before we do that, we'll just look at this advert from New Zealand. Um, now, uh, the uh, advertisers in New Zealand say here, we all need to do our part, so vaccinate, stay up to date and be an everyday hero. And they have pictures of these comic people here. And uh, that's fun, sponsored by Pfizer BioNTech. Now, the idea that there's all these comic people here, I think it's Marvel Comics, um, doesn't really grab me. So I can only assume it's aimed at an audience, shall we say, <laughs> younger than me. Um, some of you might consider that is quite outrageous and utterly unethical. Anyway, let's get down to the business of today because this is really quite an impressive study by cardiologists and scientists in uh, Switzerland. Myocardial injury after COVID-19 vaccine. This is the Moderna mRNA-1273 booster. Department of Cardiology and Cardiovascular Research Institute of Basel in Switzerland, of course. Uh, now, this is published in the European Journal of Heart Failure. It's an open access journal of the Heart Failure Association of the European Society of Cardiologists, so top flight stuff. This paper is accepted. It is peer reviewed. It's not yet published. We've got a preprint, uh, not a preprint, a, a pre release copy because it's not a preprint because it is peer reviewed and a fully accepted paper in an international peer reviewed reputable journal. Um, it's a prospective active surveillance study. So they started, they went forward, collected the data as they went on. And it's active surveillance. They were actually looking for things. In the past, what we've had is uh, retrospective passive surveillance. So it's been passive in the past. People have only um, collected data as patients have come forward to complain about it. And uh, it's been retrospective looking back. This is, this is a much better quality study all round and has produced really quite um, quite worrying results really uh, and this study was industry independent it had nothing to do with the people that are making the money nothing to do with the people that are making the money this study was not carried out by the people that are making the money independent in the uh, instigated by the uh, investigators themselves so the aim uh they want to look at the incidence of potential mechanism of oligosymptomatic. So oligo means few, oligosymptomatic. So oligosymptomatic myocardial injury um, is myocardial injury, which has sometimes no symptoms uh, or sometimes minimal symptoms. It's oligosymptomatic. But that doesn't mean to say there can't be quite severe, severe uh, consequences. In fact, just before we go on, I think I'll just tell you something about the potential severe consequences. Now, this is from... Um, the textbook of medicine that's used, been used for generations now. Um, I just want to read something from this. Um, in most patients, this is talking about myocarditis. In most patients, the disease is self-limiting and the immediate prognosis is excellent. However, death may occur due to ventricular arrhythmia or rapid progressive heart failure. Myocarditis has been reported as a cause of sudden and unexpected death in young athletes. And we could go on and read about longer term complications. Not my words, directly from David's principles and practice of uh, medicine. Anyway, let's get back to the study we're looking at. Uh, we're looking at today this study from Switzerland, uh, following COVID mRNA vaccine boosters. So this is following boosters. Now, 
they wanted to check on what was causing this and how often it was occur- occurring. And it's also very important, a safety net for people that have been boosted. So what they did, if people had uh, raised troponins at three days after the booster, they said, look, you've got raised troponins after three days. Therefore, let's go to repeat blood test. Therefore, let's go to 12 lead ECG or other cardiological investigations as the cardiologists deem fit. Take rest. Do not exercise. Because if you've got, if you've got myocarditis and you just rest for a few days, good chance it'll just go away, get better. If you go running or training, there's a good chance, not a good chance, but there's a chance um, you can go into a ventricular fibrillation, into a full cardiac arrest. So the fact that these people were warned is so important. Probably not happening where you are, certainly not happening where I am. (coughs) So this safety netting, screening and prevention of complications, research methods. So uh, December 2021 to February 2022, hospital employees, so these are healthcare workers mostly, but hospital employees, scheduled to undergo booster vaccination. This is the Moderna Um, they were assessed for vaccine-associated myocardial injury, blood being taken three days after the uh, the vaccine. Uh, defined as an acute uh, dynamic increase in, so what they look for, high sensitivity, cardiac troponin uh, concentration, that's what they're looking for. So we, we probably know this, but if we, if we have cells here in the heart, so th- these would be cells in the heart, these uh, cells that constitute the, the myocardium, now, in, in these cells, there are troponins. So troponins are chemicals in these cells. that's to do with the contraction of the myocardium. Now, if the cell is damaged or insulted in any way, if there's, if there's damage to the cell, then what happens is there's actually a breach in the integrity of the cell wall and, it, and the troponins leak out. So if these troponins are found in higher concentrations in the blood, it indicates that myocardial cells have been damaged. Very, very simple cardiac marker. Testing, absolutely standard to look for troponins in all aspects of coronary care. So they're looking for those above age and sex upper limits on day uh, three. Blood taken 48 to 96 hours after vaccination. And very importantly, there was no alternative course. So these patients were screened by proper doctors and scientists. If they had a reason why they might have increased troponins, like they just ran a marathon, <laughs> that they would be excluded from the study. Other causes of raised troponins were excluded. This is a very thorough, well-conducted study. And I've already seen quite a bit of misinformation about this study already, but it is well-conducted. They did exclude other causes of um, raised troponins. 77 participants, median age 37, more women than men in a healthcare environment. So working age adults, at minimal, minimal risk from severe COVID, almost, almost none. I mean, all these patients have been exposed many times if they're healthcare workers, almost, almost certainly. Um, now, 40 participants, 5.1% had high sensitivity didn't high sensitivity cardiac troponin concentrations on day three that were above the 99th percentile already that's high so 5.1 percent is already high showing uh much higher levels of troponin than you would expect um mrna 1273 vaccine associated myocardial injury was adjudicated in 22 participants 2.8 percent god dear me if, if someone said to me, look, you could have had this vaccine, as I did. Uh, oh, but by the way, there's a 2.8% chance you'll have a, a vaccine-associated myocardial injury. I would have run a mile. I am furious at not being fully informed about this, and you should be too. We've been treated like mushrooms on this, and it's completely unacceptable. It, it's, just, it's just, anyway, we'll leave that point there. So one in 35 participants, uh, one in 35 recipients rather, one in 35 who received the booster vaccine had vaccine-associated myocardial injury. I'm just going to read that out again. One in 35 people who received the booster had vaccine-associated myocardial injury. This This is a range of adverse reaction that is off the scale in healthcare, off the scale, and yet, and yet, In New Zealand and other places, it's still being actively and unethically, some might say, promoted. Um, 
This is just off the scale risks, off the scale, completely. The only way you would take this kind of risk in healthcare, if the alternative was certain death. Otherwise, you just certainly wouldn't. You know, we just don't take this level of risk. It's just complete madness. What has happened here? How how is this level? Let's let's keep to the let's keep to the data. Um, of the seven hundred and seventy-seven, two women had chest pain. So what we're seeing here is most people here. Um, did not present with chest pain, and yet they had this myocardial injury, which could result in a focus for ventricular fibrillation and an adverse consequence that is irreversible. Um, of the 22 cases with mRNA 1273 vaccine associated myocardial injury, 20 cases occurred in women, two in men. Now, this is the complete reversal of what we got with the passive surveillance. So active surveillance, when we're actually looking for the issue, is showing more myocardial damage in women as opposed to um, the passive surveillance where it was more young men that were affected. Interesting. Uh, pity this wasn't looked for actively before. Um, so young women could be fully informed, give informed consent before they were vaccinated. I mean, as adults, we're allowed to give informed consent for a lot of things. And if we don't give informed consent, then that changes the meaning completely. Completely changes the meaning of something that occurs if informed consent was not given. And yet, this is the case here. Informed consent has not been given because this wasn't looked for and talked about. Uh, troponin elevations were mild and only temporary. Good. No patients had ECG changes. Good. None developed major adverse cardiac events within 30 days. Good. But of course, these ones, these ones, these people were warned that they had high troponins and knew not to go exercising. All the difference in the world. In the overall booster cohort, uh, so, th so this is the cohort that were boosted. Remember, 777 of them that qualified. Many more were taken on, but some were excluded. So that's correct. Um, median was uh, 5 nanograms per litre of troponin. Interquartile range was 4 to 6. 50% were in the 4 to 6 range. Match controls, it was 3. Interquartile range, 3 to 5. So basically we've got 5 nanograms per litre in the uh, boosted group. And we've got 3 nanograms per litre in the control group. That is a big difference. And significantly, statistically, that is significant P equals 0 0.001, so there's only a one chance in a thousand. Very highly significant result that that could have arisen by chance. So we accept that as a result. If elevated on day three, there were warning, and they knew not to go exercising. And as a result of this, well, we can't say as a result of this, but thankfully we can say no major adverse cardiac events were in 30 days. So because, um, well, we don't know why, but Certainly, it's possible that these would have occurred if the patients hadn't been warned. Um, no major adverse events following 30-day follow-up. So there was no cardiac arrests. Excellent. Uh, no uh, acute myocardial infarctions. No acute heart failure. No life-threatening arrhythmias. But these patients had been warned that their troponins were increased, indicating they had myocardial damage, so they knew not to exercise. They were looked after by a doctor. Cases had comparable um, systematic reactogenicity. So concentrations of cytokines and cytokine antagonists, things that work against the cytokines, were markedly uh, were markers uh, of quantifying symptomatic inflammation. So they looked for these things, which was good. Now, they also, I'm not going to go into this in detail, but they had lower concentrations of a couple of factors here. Uh, granulocyte, <laughs> granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor. But basically, these are things that stimulate the immune response. So that stimulates a lot of protection against uh, bacteria, for example. This stimulates a lot of protection against viruses. These were lower in the, uh, the people that had adverse reactions. Now, the question is, did the vaccine lower 
their protection against these viral and bacterial infections? Or was it that these uh, protections were already lower, making the people prone to vaccine damage? That's one of the things that's currently being investigated and needs further study. Anyway, conclusion, mRNA uh, Moderna vaccine associated myocardial injury was more common than previously thought. So vaccine associated myocardial injury was more common than previously thought. One in 35 people who had the vaccine. Massive. Being mild and transient, more frequent in women versus men. No adverse events. The people were warned. The watchman gave word that the enemy was attacking the city. The possible protective role of uh, the antiviral one and the uh, anti primarily antibacterial one warrant further studies. So that was from the uh, Moderna booster. Similar studies um, from Pfizer. That one was from uh, Israel from memory. That one was from um, Thailand from memory. That's the Pfizer ad. I do hope that this is not a sat. If this is if this is supposed to be a joke that someone's put up, it's in very poor taste. Uh, but if not, if it's what it appears to be, then uh, it's also in very poor taste. Attracting young people to take an mRNA vaccine. One in thirty-five participants had um, vaccine-induced myocardial injury, much more common than previously thought. Now, if this, anyone who's vaccinated after this should be given this information. If not, that they haven't been given, that they're not, they're not giving informed consent. Therefore, it's illegal. If you don't give informed consent for other types of activity, that's got legal implications. We have to give informed consent. MRNA 1273 vaccine associated myocardial injury was adjudicated in 22 participants, 2.8%. One in 35 recipients, 2.8% had vaccine associated myocardial injury. Not much more to be said on that. We look forward to an immediate and urgent response from regulators around the world. If we don't get it, then they just hold themselves up to public mockery, ridicule. What are they there for? What are they there for? If they don't act on this immediately. We'll leave it there. Thank you for watching.